Shincheonji Online Seminar Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation God's New Covenant Testifying about Revelation to the Whole World August and September 2021 The First and Second Shincheonji Online Seminar A total of 30,372 participants from 12 places Approximately 1,800 pastors in attendance The words of Revelation are revealed finally in 2,000 years. The chairman and the 12 tribe leaders of Shincheonji Church of Jesus are making known the secrets of the Kingdom of Heaven. From October 18th to December 27th, every Monday and Thursday, Shincheonji Online Seminar is broadcasted worldwide simultaneously. We invite everyone to testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation God's New Covenant. Testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation God's New Covenant. Welcome to the Shincheonji Online Seminar. I am Pyeon Chejun, your presider for today. To all pastors, theology school students, and congregation members all over the world who have come together to know the true will of God, it's nice to meet you. The Shincheonji Revelation online seminar, which is currently being broadcast all over the world through YouTube in 24 languages over the span of two months, is the first in the world to testify to the secrets of Revelation, the fulfillment of the entire events of Revelation. Thanks to the great interest of pastors and believers around the world, the total number of views of the seminar from Revelation chapter 1 up to now has exceeded 1 million and a craze is blowing worldwide. Yet again today, we will have a chance to hear the word which cannot be heard anywhere else in the world. We will begin the seminar in thanks for the truth and great grace that God and Jesus have given us. With united hearts, let us pray together. Holy Father God, you who are full of love and grace, we are truly thankful to you for gathering our hearts at this time and for leading us to be able to hear the precious words of life through this online seminar on the testimony of prophecy and fulfillment of revelation, God's new covenant that was granted from the heavens. Through the testimony of the promised pastor whom Jesus has sent, we are able to perceive that this era is the era of the fulfillment of the covenant in which all the words that Jesus promised are fulfilled. So won't you please grant us the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and a heart of wisdom to perceive even at this time, just as Jesus, the Son of God who came to this earth about 2,000 years ago, proclaimed peace and led many to God with the word of truth. Through the word of testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of revelation that is testified at this time, please allow us all to become one in Jesus. Please allow a blessed time to be united and to enjoy peace through the perception you grant and won't you allow us to become one in truth. In particular, please pour out wisdom and power from the heavens on the tribe leader who will be testifying to the word at this time and please make it a precious time for everyone to gather our hearts and give glory to you, our Father in heaven. We pray in the holy name of Jesus, who has depended on you from beginning to end and led us from death to life. Amen. This seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to COVID-19 guidelines and social distancing regulations. So far, we have learned the words of Revelation from chapters 1 to 9. Today, we will learn the words of Revelation chapter 10 through the tribe leader of Matthias' tribe, Chang Pangshik.
If we can sum up Revelation chapter 10 in one phrase, it can be said to be the revealed book from heaven and the promised pastor. Everyone, do you know that about 2,000 years ago, Jesus prophesied that at the time of the second coming today, there would be a time of famine when there is no food to eat? then what we are thankful for is that when such things happen, precious food of life is given from heaven so that all people can have life. If this is so, you need to know what this food is and how and through whom you can eat it, right? If you listen carefully to the words of Revelation chapter 10 gone over today, you will find it very refreshing that these questions are answered. When the open word of the book of Revelation is testified, I hope it will be a precious time for the light of truth to brighten everyone's hearts. Then now, we will welcome Chang Bangshik, the tribe leader of Matthias tribe, who will testify to the word today. Please give him a big round of applause. To all the pastors, theology students, and church members around the world, greetings to you. I am Chang Bangshik tribe leader, appointed in the name of Jesus' disciple Matthias of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Today I'm going to testify to the words of Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. The title of Revelation chapter 10 is The Revealed Book from Heaven and the Promised Pastor. So one more time. The Revealed Book from Heaven and the Promised Pastor. So looking at the key points, this revealed book from heaven, in which route is it delivered, is made known to us here. And this is who? God gives it to who? Jesus. Jesus gives to an angel. Angel gives it to John. And John gives it to the servants. Isn't that right? And this is recorded in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ, but it is God who gave it to Jesus. And Jesus gives it to an angel. Angel gives it to John, and John gives it to the servants, right? And the revelation of Jesus Christ John appears, who delivers the revelation of Jesus Christ to the servants. Then who is John? This is very important for us to know in the book of Revelation. So there is John at the time of at the time when the book of Revelation is recorded. But at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, there is also John who sees and testifies the fulfillment. Right? In the in the main reference, in the main reference, we're more than talking about John of the past two thousand years ago. We're thinking about John at the time of fulfillment, and we will name him New John. So who is he? He is a character that appears at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, and he is a pastor who received this revealed word. Why? In Hosea chapter 12, verse 10, it says, God, he spoke to the many prophets, but he did not want to give it to the prophets but he, he told parables through them, correct? Therefore, when he prophesied, because there was no physical entities, he showed visions, and they recorded it figuratively. However, at the time when the prophecies are fulfilled, the physical entities appear. So what is being testified to is the physical entities. And Jesus, as he opened the seals one by one and fulfilled his words, Besides him, there is a witness who saw and heard all the events. And who is that? John here. Looking at the outline of Revelation chapter 10, first we see an open book from heaven, and then we see the mystery of the seventh trumpet, and we see John who received and ate the open book and his appointed task. So we'll divide it into three parts. Let's first read Revelation chapter 10, verse 1 to 4 in one voice. Revelation chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun, and his legs were like fire pillars. 
He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. Amen. Yes, you read well. So what do we see here? It says, I, Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, robed in a cloud. Above his head, what do we see? A rainbow. And his face is like the sun. And his legs are like what? Fire pillars. So in this revelation, we see that I saw, that I looked. Then who is the one who's saying this? At the time when the prophecies was recorded, it was Apostle John. However, at the time of fulfillment, it is new John who's seeing these things. Must we know this? So John, John saw a vision. However, new John sees the physical entity. And he was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot where? On the sea. What about the left foot? On the land. And he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. And when he shouted, the voices of the th seven thunders spoke. Isn't that right? So the seven thunders, when they spoke, it says, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven say, what? Seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Isn't that right? Yes, so there is an open book from heaven and there is an, another mighty angel who comes down with this open book. Then what we have to understand is who is this another mighty angel? In Revelation chapter 8, when the last seal is taken off, there are, also, there are seven angels that appear who receive the seven trumpets, but this angel is different from those seven angels. And in Revelation chapter 9, the sixth angel sounds a trumpet. After that, in Revelation chapter 11, the seventh angel sounds his trumpet. And before this, there is an event of receiving this open book. And this angel comes down from heaven. And what does this mean? It comes down to this earth from the spiritual world. And this angel, he's roped in, like you see here, the clouds. What does it mean to be roped in the clouds? It means that he comes with many angels. In Exodus chapter 19 and Ezekiel chapter 1, when God, whenever God appeared, he appeared in a dense cloud, right? Just like that, this angel also comes with many other angels. And we can see, above his head, there is a rainbow, and his face is like the sun, and his feet are like fire pillars. What does this mean? This means, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 13 to 16, whose appearance is this? This resembles Jesus' appearance, correct? So he comes in Jesus' appearance meaning he comes according to Jesus' promises and he delivers Jesus' revealed word. Isn't that right? Why? Because in Genesis chapter 9, verse 13, rainbow symbolizes a covenant. And in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, it is promised how? That's revelation of Jesus Christ. Who? An angel will bring it and give it to who? To John, right? And so, this is an angel fulfilling that promise. There, that is why there's a rainbow. And there is a wait, there is a open scroll in his hand. What is the open scroll here? In Revelation chapter 5, in the right hand of God, there is a scroll sealed with seven seals. That is the book of Revelation, correct? And Jesus, because he has triumphed, he is able to take the book. And in Revelation chapter 6, he took off the six seals. And in Revelation chapter 8, he took off the last seal. So after it is now revealed, he commands this angel to give it to John. That's why this open book is talking about the revealed book. Then the reason why this angel brings the revealed book is why? To give it to John, to deliver it to John. 
That's why he brings it. Who brings it? This angel. And this is promised in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, that an angel is commanded to give it to John, right? And to deliver this words of revealed book to John, that's why this angel brings it. But let's look at the, the route of the deliverance of Revelation. So in Revelation chapter 5, we see a book sealed with seven seals in the right hand of God. But Jesus, because he has triumphed, he's able to take the book. And in Revelation chapter 6 and 8, he opens the seals and fulfills the book. This fulfilled, revealed book is given to an angel. An angel gives it to who? Gives it to this one person, John. Has him eat it. And this is John that we see here. And John, he gives it to many servants. And that's this is why he came. Then in order to receive this revelation, do I, have to, do I receive it from God? Do I receive it from Jesus? Do I receive it from an angel? Or do I receive it from New John? What is the correct answer? According to the promise in the Bible, God's servants must absolutely receive the revealed word through John. Whose revelation? Jesus' revelation, right? And this angel, there is sea and the land that is standing on. Then what is the sea and the land? We have to find out. Sea is referring to the world. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 3 and verse 17, it says, There are four great beasts that came up out of the sea. And looking at the interpretation, it says, It comes, it rises from the earth. So the sea is the earth, and it is the world. And in Revelation chapter 17, there is a prostitute sitting on many waters. And looking closely, we can see, it is actually talking about the beast with seven and horns. She is sitting on the beast. Therefore, who are they? the destroyers and their organization and, and the left foot standing on the land. Then what is the land? It is talking about the saints of the tabernacle of the golden lampstands that betrayed. In, Jer in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 13, it says, those who forsook God, their names are written in dust. So it is talking about those who betrayed. And in Revelation chapter 13, verse 7 to 8, the, tabern the saints of the tabernacle of heaven, they fought the beast and was defeated. Therefore, they're worshipping the beast. They're following the beast. Therefore, we can see they are the betrayers, right? And this angel, standing on the land and the sea, is shouting. What is he shouting? He's shouting the judgment of the betrayers and the destroyers with the open book. And this is shown to John. If you look John chapter 5 verse 22 at the time at the time of first coming Jesus says the father has entrusted all the judgment to the son right but he does not judge in John chapter 12 verse 48 it says the words i have spoke will condemn in the last days but how in revelation chapter 12 verse 12 according to what they have done according to everyone's deeds they will be judged according to the book isn't that right and the reason why this is shown to John is what? Angel is showing this to whom? Angel is showing this to John, correct? But why, the reason why he's showing this is because John also has to judge the betrayers and the destroyers as according to what he has, as he has seen, correct? And we can see this in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. When we were building a sanctuary, a dwelling place of God, it was the, what was of heaven was shown to him and was commanded to build as exactly. And let's see what it says in John chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by Himself. He can do only what He sees His Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Amen. Yeah, so looking here, even Jesus, he saw everything that the Father was doing and he did it on earth, isn't it so? Therefore, this sea and the land, judging the destroyers and the betrayers, it is written very clearly in Revelation chapter 16, so you'll learn it at the time. Now, the sound of the seven thunders, it says, do not write it down, but seal it up, right? Then, what are the seven thunders? 
It is talking about the seven spirits before God's throne. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, we see the seven lamps blazing before God's throne. And in Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, we see the same thing. So the seven thunders, what is the sound that they're, what, what are they shouting? They're shouting the words that are recorded in the open book. This is the word of wrath, meaning the word of judgment. So this angel, together with the seven spirits, are carrying out judgment. And the reason why it, the reason why it is not recorded and the reason why it is sealed up, it is because John is going to receive and eat the book and teach it. That's why there's no reason to write it down. And this is recorded very well in Revelation chapter 10, verse 8 to 11. And in Revelation chapter 10, verse 5, what do we see? Then the angel I have seen standing on the sea and the land raised his right hand to heaven, and he swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and the earth, the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it, and said there will be no more delay, meaning it will be fulfilled very quickly. Isn't that so? So this angel standing on the sea and the land, he swears that there will be no more delay. So, once again, let's think about how he's standing on the sea and the land. It, just like we just learned, it is what he's judging, the destroyers and the betrayers. So, with this word, he judges. Isn't it so? And what does it mean that there will be no more delay? It's not only judgment, but also the mystery of the seventh trumpet will be quickly fulfilled. And when we see in Revelation chapter 10, does it say it must take place soon? Or is it going to take place slowly? It is going to take place very soon, isn't it, right? Well, this, this book of prophecy has been delivered for us to us for the past 2,000 years. But when it fulfills, it fulfills very quickly. Think about it. At the time of first coming, he spoke to many prophets over hundreds of years. But at the time when Jesus came, it fulfilled approximately three years, right? So it takes a long time for prophecies to be given and numerous people. However, when it fulfills, it fulfills very in a short time. And what must soon take place, it is talking about the entire events of the book of Revelation. So the entire events of Revelation must soon take place. And we learned this in Revelation chapter 1 verse 2, right? And if we, if we learned it, we must believe it, correct? And it's important here in verse 7, it says, Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. In the day when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, it says the mystery of God will be accomplished just as he announced to his servants the prophets, right? So whose mystery? God's mystery. Then, do people know God's mystery? If we know this, then it won't be a mystery, right? Then, this is the mystery of the seventh trumpet. I hope that everyone, that we can seal Revelation chapter 10, verse 7 in our hearts. And in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, we can see the kingdom of the world becomes God's kingdom. So when we say God's kingdom heaven, we thought we die and go, right? However, it says here that the kingdom of the world becomes God's kingdom. That is written in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. When the seventh angel sounds his trumpet, the kingdom of this world becomes his kingdom, God's kingdom, meaning heaven. And God, he will reign, how? Forever and ever. Then, in order for us to understand this, we have to see what it says in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. At the time of Adam, God created the heavens and the earth and all creation. And he trusted Adam. And because of his trust in Adam, he entrusted all creation to him and had him rule over it. However, he forsook God and he followed after the serpent. That's why God had no choice but to leave this earth. And death reigned as a king over us. Who is death? Satan, the devil. So Satan, the devil, was in control of this world. However, at the time, when the seventh angel sounds his trumpet, from that point on, the Lord begins to reign forever and ever. Isn't this an incredible thing? 
This is what is absolutely needed. This mystery is needed in this world. Wasn't the Garden of Eden the kingdom that God was one with? But that was taken away by the devil. But that is restored, and God's kingdom is established. It's, it's a very important mystery. Pastors who are present today, and church members, we didn't know this, right? And because we didn't know it, it's God's mystery. Must I be offended by this? No, I must be thankful to God and to Jesus. And the one who testified to this, about these words to us, isn't that right? Yes, we must. And what else? Apostle Paul talked about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 54. He talked about this, the, the seventh trumpet. And the seventh trumpet is referred to as the last trumpet here. It says, The dead will be raised imperishable. Why? Because there are those who were delivering the word of God and died. And their bodies decayed. They no longer exist. However, they will be raised a spiritual body, correct? And here, it's also a mystery here. It says, we will be changed. And we will be changed. We are perishable. We are mortal. However, when the last trumpet, the seventh trumpet sounds, The kingdom of the world becomes God's kingdom and God reigns. So what is mortal and what is perishable will turn to immortality and imperishable. Isn't it so? So be clothed like this. Who, who would know this? And because no one knows it, it is God's mystery. That's why what comes out of us is thankfulness. To make this known, God and Jesus, for a long period of time, they have been working and fulfilling. Isn't it so? That's why Jesus says, I have sent my messenger for the churches to make this known to you. Isn't that right? What is that? When the last trumpet sounds, death is swallowed up in victory. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4, it says the fact that death is swallowed up in victory will be accomplished. So until now, everybody has been subject to death. But who is... But Satan, the devil, has the power of death, isn't it so? But we didn't know this. So whose mystery is this? It is God's mystery. Even I myself, when I learned this, I was very excited to learn these words, very eager to learn these words. And I was very moved in my heart. Everyone, you came here very well. So please listen carefully. So all mankind, all mankind, we desire to partake in resurrection and obtain eternal life, right? That's what God and Jesus desire from us. Jesus says, I am resurrection and life. That, that life, Jesus is talking about eternal life. When he says, I am the way and the truth and life, Jesus lives eternally. He's talking about eternal life. Then all mankind, in order to partake in resurrection and eternal life, they must hear what? The seventh trumpet sound. Isn't that sound? But what is the seventh trumpet sound? It is a mystery. There's no one who knows. No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth. Is there anyone who can open this book? No one. But in order to hear the seventh trumpet sound, we must Meet the promised pastor who is the seventh trumpet, correct? So, more than asking 10,000 people, right, we have to get rid of our pride. What's more important is God and Jesus, isn't that so? Than all the pastors who have gathered at this place, I believe that we have one heart. Same thing with the congregation members. That's why we have come to the seminar. Through the seminar, we desire. to learn the prophecies of revelation and the physical fulfillment. So listen carefully. This is how we can partake in resurrection and eternal life and receive these blessings, correct? Why? Because God left. And finally, after how many years? 6,000 years is returning. And Jesus left. And it's been 2,000 years, but he comes back. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and life. Isn't it so? Then today, at the time of resurrection and eternal life, those who re hear this sound will be blessed. Correct? And let's see what is in verse 8. It says, Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me once more. Go, take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and the land. So take the scroll. That's what the voice from the heavens is saying. And we saw, we heard this voice. So John who hears this voice, 
went to the angel and he says, give me the little scroll. And the angel says, take it and eat it. It will be what? Sweet as honey in your mouth. But when you eat it, it will be sour in your stomach. So he says, I, take the, I took the scroll. I took the little scroll and it was what? Sweet as honey in my mouth and very sour in the stomach. So it's honey in the mouth and sour in the stomach. So we have to understand what this means too. So they are saying, Promise Pastor, who received and ate the open book. What was the title today? It is the revealed book from heaven. And there's one, the Promise Pastor who ate and received this book. At the time of first coming, the one who received the revealed word was the Promise Pastor at the time of first coming. Today, the one who ate the revealed word of the New Testament is the Promise Pastor of the New Testament at the second coming. We must know this and believe this. So John, who received and ate the book, so how did he receive it? He heard a voice from the heaven, isn't it so? Whose voice is this? God's voice. Think about the picture. Think about the picture that we saw before. There's God and also Jesus and also who? Angel, right? All of them are ah. In the spiritual world, they're a spirit. In heaven, then whose voice must this be? It is God's voice. Why? Because these words, God recorded it. So he's listening to God's voice. And then this little open scroll, it is what? The revealed book, which Jesus took off the sails, right? And he ate this little scroll. Why is it little? It's because out of the 66 books of the Bible, there is one book. This is one book. But physical food, we eat it with our mouth. But when we say, listen to my words, we have to listen with our ears, right? So we have to eat with our ears these words. And because he has entered into John, what does it mean that he received and ate it? It means that he perceived everything of this word. He digested it. He mastered it. Isn't it so? Then must, we, must this fulfill or not? It must fulfill. Then pastors whom I respect and the congregation members, let me ask you, today, when, who, where, receive this book, these words, can we find this out by studying this? No. Why? Because we can only know it at the time of fulfillment, correct? Then should we talk about the fulfillment? Yes, we must. In the early, in the beginning of 1980, in the city of Anyang, there's a place called Indogwan, in the province of Gyeonggi-do. And there's a prayer mountain there. And who received it there? New John. So everyone listen to this. And if there's an opportunity, uh, you can also visit that place. We're not talking about a place that doesn't exist. Therefore, but it was sweet as honey in his mouth, right? Why? Because no one knew God's mysteries. But now he finally knows, so he is overjoyed, right? So he says, ah, this is what? The joy of perceiving the words of the secrets, just like it says in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 2 to 3, no one knew this, but when Ezekiel had known it, it was what? It was, he, he says, it tasted as sweet as honey in his mouth, but it was what? Sour in his stomach. So even for ourselves, when you go through a difficult time, you say your stomach is getting a stomach ache, right? Why? Because he, there is so much suffering and pain that he has to go, go through. Why is that? Think about it. The seven messengers who worked through Jesus, there are over 80 branch churches. But go to them and tell them, this is why you're the betrayers. Would they just leave him alone? Think about it. Over 7,000 congregation members, approximately over 80 branch churches, going to them and going to those that came out of the sea. And there are famous pastors that everybody knows. And all the people of religion consider them and see them as respected pastors and go to them and say, you're the destroyers. You did the work of destruction. Going to them and saying these things, that's why it was very sour in his stomach. Think about how difficult it was. Then we have to understand his heart. And we have to, I hope that we can participate in this work together. So new John in this era today, he received and ate the open book and delivered these words. 
Even in the Old Testament, similarly at the time of the Old Testament, there was a promised pastor whom God prophesied and sent according to the prophecies. So, what can we understand? In Isaiah chapter 29, verse 9 to 14, all it says, this whole vision is what? Se were sealed in a scroll. That's why those who can read and those who cannot read, all of them cannot understand. So they say, Lord, Lord, out of their lips, but their hearts are far from God, and they only are taught what rules taught by men. So God is going to perform Wonder upon wonder, isn't it so? What is, where is the answer to this? Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. All the vision of the Old Testament, there is an appointed time of when it will be, when it will be fulfilled. And looking at Ezekiel chapter 1, 2, and 3, when God's people are in exile, that's when God comes with the clouds and chose one person, Ezekiel, correct? And choosing this person, it says, you must go to the rebellious house of Israel and testify to them. And he opened the scroll. And opening the scroll, we can see the open scroll, of the old, this is the Old Testament that has opened. And the words of lament and oh and judgment was there. And with that, he had to eat it and go to the rebellious house of Israel. Whether they listen or fail to listen, you must still testify. That's the answer. But when did that fulfill? It wasn't at the time of Ezekiel. It was actually approximately how many years later? Approximately 600 years later. God who spoke to Ezekiel came to Jesus. Coming to Jesus in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, he says, what does Jesus say? I was not sent to anywhere else. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. So who? It was what Jesus, who received an eighth open book and testified to those words. Why is this important? It's because in Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. And in John chapter 17, verse 3, it says, Eternal life is what? To know the true God and the one whom He has sent. Isn't that so? Then, do pe did people like eternal life? People didn't like it, although God promised it and Jesus promised it. But the people at the time, because it was a different teaching, they killed Jesus. And so Jesus shed his blood and established a new covenant, didn't he? And that is, now let's look at the promised pastor of the New Testament. In Revelation chapter 5, in the right hand of God, there's a book. It is sealed with seven seals. No one in heaven or on earth or even under the earth could know these things. But this, in Revelation chapter 6, 8, and 10, this book, the seals are open and a pastor is chosen and these words are given to him, isn't it so? Then, is this, or do these words apply to John 2,000 years ago? No, it's a book of prophecy. We have to believe in it at the time of fulfillment. Approximately how many years later? Approximately 2,000 years later. Approximately 2,000 years later, it's fulfilled. The promised pastor of the New Testament, New John, appears. And Jesus, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, it says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches, right? Then, is it God and Jesus who directly testifies? No. It is what? Chosen a messenger. And that messenger is what? Is written in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you the testimony for the churches. Why? Because the churches do not know this. Whose revelation is this? It is the revelation of Jesus Christ, isn't it so? Then at the time of first coming, at the, at the time of first coming, it was through Jesus that one could receive heaven and eternal life. But today, Jesus gives to New John. Then through New John, just like it says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, I can receive a revelation. I need to receive a revelation to know it. And when I know it, in, in John chapter 17, verse 3, knowing the true God and Jesus and the one who is sent, I can and then enter into eternal life. Do you not like this? There's nothing for us to not like here. Why? Because it's the promise of God and Jesus, right? Yes, yeah, so all mankind, everyone must meet who? New John. At the time of first coming, all, all mankind must meet Jesus. 
Similarly, New John, today, why? As you know, the opened, revealed book, he is the one who received an Aiden. So where is Jesus' revelation? It's in the stomach of New John. What was in the hand of God? Jesus took the book, opened the seals, commanded an angel to give it to John, and it, now it's John's stomach. Th then who, what, who can say something else? Then in order for us to receive this revelation, we have to meet New John who ate it, correct? Therefore, the revealed word is in his stomach. If a person is figuratively like a bull, then what comes out of his mouth is the revealed word inside of this, his bowl. Well, if there's an apple in this bowl, then the apple will come out. If there's an orange on this bowl, then the orange will come out. Because there's a revealed word in his stomach, there's a revealed word com coming out of his bowl. And also, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, is Jesus is advocate. Jesus did not, does not testify directly. He chose a messenger, isn't it so? Just like how God came to Jesus and delivered his words at the time of first coming. And also, we can also see in Matthew chapter 25, there is wise virgins and foolish virgins. And the wise virgins are those who prepare the lamps and oil. And how can we prepare our lamp and oil? We're going to learn this next time in Revelation chapter 11. Olive oil can be re retrieved from olive trees, right? And in Revelation chapter 11, verse 3 to 4, this new John who received this revealed word, he is Jesus' witness. And a witness is what? An olive tree, figuratively. Just like how... Just like how physical olive oils come from olive tree, but olive tree is a person who received the words of revelation. That's why he is, his words is what? Olive oil. Then in order for me to become a wise virgin, I need to meet new John. Isn't that right? Today, spiritual Israel ends in Revelation chapter 6. And in Revelation chapter 7, coming with the seal of the living God, there is what? The work of sealing. Then the seal is what? The seal is who? New John. Then must I meet New John? Yes, we must. And just like we learned, New, new John is the him who overcomes, who receives the 12 blessings. So what, what are the 12 blessings? You know this so well. Ah, the hidden manna that we can eat. And also the white stone, the authority to judge all nations. And also authority to rule over all nations, the iron scepter and God, and Jesus, and heaven who left, come down to him who overcomes. And furthermore, he will sit on the throne together with God and Jesus. And who is this? In Revelation chapter 12, he who overcomes. What did he overcome with? He overcame with the revealed word. Because he received it, he fights and overcomes with it. And in Revelation chapter 21, verse 7, he becomes God's son. At the time of first coming, Jesus was God's son. And today, it is new John who becomes God's son. It is promised in that way. We cannot be those who do not believe this, right? Like it says in Psalm chapter 2, verse 7, God, he says, you are my son. That prophecy fulfilled at the time of first coming, it appeared as Jesus. At the, in Revelation, we see God's son, he who overcomes then is it better for us to believe it or not believe it? Yes, we must believe it. Let's see what it says in the last verse this time. Verse 11, Then I was told, So angel is telling me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, and languages, and kings, correct? So John, who received this book, he, this is his appointed task. So what is the task, appointed task of the promised pastor? He has to prophesy again to many peoples, nations, and languages and kings. But who are these individuals? It is talking about all churches in sin. Why? In Revelation chapter 13, verse 7, who are the many peoples, nations, and languages and kings? Is that Satan is ruling over this beast, right? And Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, the prostitute whom the Satan's spirit is inside, his rule, they're ruling over the people's multitudes and nations and languages. And in Revelation chapter 18, verse 2, it says, home demons, home for demons, and they all have drunk the maddening wine of adultery and have fallen. So to them, again, he has to teach them prophesy again. Why? Because they they were only taught, they only learned man's teaching.
Because everything was sealed. All this prop because they don't know the prophecies and fulfillment. They say it will be like this. It will be like that. In Matthew chapter 13, in Revelation chapter 13, the mark of the beast is like barcode. Like you know, so because they only have learned men's teaching, they have to learn again, isn't it right? Then at the time of first coming, because of their ignorance of the Bible. They opposed the promised pastor of the Old Testament, and they even went to the point of killing Jesus, saying, saying he's a heresy. But those who killed Jesus at the time were the Jews. It was actually the pastors, and it was a matter of what it's. It wasn't a matter of whether I accept it or not. I hope that we can learn all things through the Bible. So let's see the conclusion. What is the objective of Revelation chapter 10? Jesus, who we believe. Promised the promised pastor of the New Testament. Who is he? New John, who received and ate the open book coming down from heaven. He is Jesus' advocate, isn't it right? Like it says in John chapter 14, verse 9 to 10, when Philip says, Show us the Father, Jesus says, Father is in me and speaking through me. Then Jesus' words are actually God's words. So Jesus was speaking on God's behalf. Similarly, New John is the one who's speaking on behalf of Jesus. He's Jesus' advocate. And all blessings will be given to him who overcomes in Deuteronomy chapter 28. All blessings given to the him who overcomes, and those who are defeated, everything will be taken away. So he is the one who fought and overcame the group of the dragon. He became one with Jesus and created God's new kingdom, the 12 tribes. And to this place, God and Jesus and heaven come, correct? Who promised this? God promised this. Then we must meet the promised pastor who received and ate the book and testifying to what he saw and heard and the one who fought the group of the dragon and overcame became one with Jesus and created the 12 tribes of God's new kingdom must we meet him and that is the, the that is promised in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and in Revelation chapter 7 we see this newly created heaven at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation the promised pastor New John is the only person who can, who saw and heard and testify to the physical fulfillment of the prophecies of the entire book of Revelation. The only person. Why? Because in Amos chapter 3, verse 7, it says, the Surely the Lord Almighty, He does nothing without revealing His plan to His servants, the prophets first, right? And in Revelation chapter 1, verse 2, He testified to everything He saw, the Word of God. And in Revelation chapter 22, verse 8 and 16, he saw and heard and he testified, correct? Although Jesus came at the time of first coming, people did not receive him. Similarly, although new John is sent to him, what must we do? We must receive him, correct? Therefore, all over the world, pastors and believers, we are called and we are now receiving this testimony, right? So uh, only through the promised pastor of the New Testament, we can receive the words of Revelation and receive this revealed word and through receiving this revealed word we can know the true God in Jesus and receive heaven and eternal life. I hope that we do not forget this. Eternal life is what? Is our purpose. It is also God's purpose, correct? Eternal life is knowing the true God and the one that is sent. Isn't that so? Then how can we know Him? In Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, it says, G the revelation, only those who receive the revelation from Jesus can know it. But who is the one who received the revelation from Jesus? New John. Then, New John. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, ah, He gives it to he sent, commands, an, commands an angel to give it to John and explains all things to John and receives and eats the open book. That's why we must meet him. Therefore, all, everyone, everyone must meet who? The promised pastor of the New Testament who came as Jesus' messenger and received the testimony of the physical fulfillment of Revelation and know the true God who? the true God in Jesus and the true pastor. Isn't that right? Or loving congregation members and pastors. At the time of first coming, they acted out of ignorance. But when he returns, 
we need to perceive and, re and receive Him, isn't it so? And know the secrets. Pastors, what is your objective? Isn't it to teach the congregation members well and to receive heaven and eternal life together? Yes. In the book of Revelation, it says those who add to or subtract from the book of Revelation cannot enter heaven but receive place. So instead of, instead of adding to or subtracting from it, we have to perceive it fully so that we can enter into heaven and become one. We are those who are born of God's seed, saved through the blood of Jesus, and enter heaven, right? So let's shout, we are one. Yes. Thank you for listening. Let's pray to God. God, who are truly thankful and grateful for, today we saw the words of Revelation chapter 10. According to the promise, New John who received this testified to the prophecy and fulfillment. Our Father God, all the pastors who heard these words, pastors, theology students, and congregation members, will you grant us perception and through the revelation of Jesus, help us to know the true God and Jesus and the true pastor so that we can enter into heaven and eternal life. Especially, will you love the pastors so that they can perceive these words well and be able to testify to these words, the congregation members, so that we can all enter into heaven. May we be filled with your abundant love and grace. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. What is a seventh trumpet that it is a secret? It is God's astounding mystery that the dead will be raised imperishable and we who are living will also be changed to inherit eternal life. Didn't Jesus say in Matthew 25 that only a wise virgin who has prepared their lamp and enough oil can welcome Jesus, the bridegroom? then what is it that those who meet Jesus the bridegroom have prepared? It's olive oil. At the time when this is fulfilled, the reality appears. Everyone needs to keep this in mind and check whether this really happened or not. On Monday next week, Chang Pangshik, the tribe leader of Matthias tribe, will deliver the words of Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11 is about the two witnesses and the seventh trumpet, and the time is the same at 10 a.m. We hope that you will attend this time filled with grace to get to know the precious true will of God. Shincheonji Church can testify to the word of revelation with confidence because there is a promised pastor who received and ate the open revelation. In addition to the words of revelation you heard today, if you have more questions or inquiries about Shincheonji Church and its doctrine, please contact us at the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. We will look to provide detailed and kind guidance. Additionally, at a time when the secrets of the prophecy and fulfillment of the book of Revelation is testified to without adding or subtracting, pastors from all over the world who have seen and listened to the seminar are sending a video message that they want to become a member of Shincheonji by signing an MOU. Thank you to the pastors worldwide for your great support. Yes, now we will conclude today's event by praying the prayer the Lord taught us. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen.
This concludes the Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. Thank you to everyone who joined us.